Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome everybody to the press conference for the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals presented by General Tire. This is the 30th year of competition for the Chili Bowl. Competition will begin tomorrow with hot laps at approximately 4.45 p.m. We'll run all the way through Saturday. Coming into this year, we have a record-breaking 344 entries. It beats out last year's record of 330. We have drivers currently from 34 states and five countries. Among those, we have nine past champions, 54 A-feature starters, 76 Chili Bowl rookies, and we'll find out if we do beat out our driver attendance record, which was set last year at 326 at the close of draw on Friday. One thing we'd like to note, in 2015, the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals was voted amongst the top five most popular motorsports destinations in the world in a USA Today Reader's Poll. The Chili Bowl was the only dirt track in the poll, beating out some of the most prestigious tracks in the world. So it's really quite the honor for Tulsa and quite the honor for the Chili Bowl. <laughs> Joining us today at the front of the room, we have our defending Lucas Oil Chili Bowl champion for Keith Coons Motorsports, Mr. Rico Abreu. Also former Virock winner and 2014 NASCAR Sprint Cup Rookie of the Year, Mr. Kyle Larson. Joining us as well, working track prep for the second year, two-time Chili Bowl champion and three-time NASCAR Sprint Cup champion and champion in every other division that's ever been created, Tony Stewart. Also joining us up front is a five-time Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals champion, Mr. Sammy Swindell. His son, a four-time Lucas Oil Na Chili Bowl Nationals champion, and for the first time he enters as a car owner, Mr. Kevin Swindell. And last but not least, the co-founder and promoter of the Chili Bowl Nationals, the Tulsa Shootout, and the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series, Mr. Emmett Hahn. We'd also like to introduce some of our local dignitaries that are in attendance today. We have with us Mr. David Patrick of the Tulsa City Council, former councilman, Mr. Skip Steele, the following tables, executive director of the Tulsa Sports Commission, Mr. Vince Trinidad, Mr. Mark Andrus, who is the director of the Tulsa County Fairgrounds, and Ms. Karen Keith of the Tulsa County Commission. Before we begin, go any further, Mr. Trinidad, I believe you have something to say. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for allowing us a chance to go ahead and talk about the impact that the, uh, the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl has for us. I do apologize for my voice. Um, get a little bit of the season going on with me, but Emmett, I promise you this, if you want to, I'll sing you my version of Kim Carnes' Betty Davis eyes later on, <laughs> if you want to. Um, once again, good afternoon, everybody. We'd like to go ahead and, on behalf of um, Ray Hoyt, our regional tourism president, can make it today, but on behalf of him and our regional tourism board um, and our rest of our partners, we'd like to welcome everybody to uh, the Expo Square, the home of the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals for an amazing 30 years. Uh, Chili Bowl is known world over uh, for uh, its one of a kind competition between hobby racers and professional drivers. The heart pump in action on the quarter mile dirt track is absolutely exhilarating. Um, Tulsans of all ages look forward to these races every year and we have visitors coming in from 30 other countries um, to go ahead and take part in this uh, uh, race as well. Um, it's one of the first major events for us um, in the season as well as the racing circuit and it kicks off some really great uh, uh, action for us here in Tulsa. Uh, we look forward to annually having the racers and their participants and their families come to Tulsa um, to Go ahead and enjoy uh, us as a community and enjoy the restaurants and the rest of the things that a lot of your racers do. And I remember last year uh, we had some really good uh, input from the racers and some of their crews as well. So I'd like to thank you for doing that on behalf of all our regional tourism partners. We would like to also thank um, our county uh, elected officials uh, for all the partners and the Expo Square staff. Uh, Mark Anderson and the rest of his staff for just being great partners for us. Um, it does take many partners to go ahead and put together uh, an event like this from the drivers to Emmett and the rest of the crew, um, including the staff here in the county. So we'd like to thank everybody for that. Um, for this particular event, it certainly flourishes because of that particular partnership that we have overall. Um, overall mission is to go ahead and attract amateur uh, uh, events such as this to go ahead and provide economic prosperity for the community and this event certainly does that Emmett um, and being here for 30 years certainly proves time and time again your commitment to Tulsa and its community uh, over and over again and uh, we have generations of individuals that have grown up knowing nothing but that this event is here in Tulsa we look forward to having you and keeping you here for many years in advance so on behalf of all of us at Regional Tourism I'm going to go introduce Emmett Hahn um, the promoter and owner of the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl
another thing that we're proud of right here, and I was talking to Mark uh, about it the other day, when we started 30 years ago, I can tell you the air quality is not like it is today. And uh, Shannon has been out here for a lot of years uh, taking care of our air. Uh, Jim Carpenter, uh, no retired hazmat fireman that I raced against. Jim's worked very hard on this with the fire marshal. And when they was talking about our air quality out here, they looked in there and they only standards they had was uh, an eight-hour shift at a plant, what your CO level could be. So there's really no standards. So in the last eight years, these guys have come up with this. And so they was telling me here last week that here within a, a month or so, that this air quality right here in this building right here will be the standard for indoor racing. So that's uh, that's another thing that makes Expo Square stand out among the rest of them. Uh, I wish I could tell you that Lanny and I was smart when we started this chili bowl. Uh, what's that old saying? You'd rather be lucky or smart or good. Uh, we was just fortunate enough that uh, we survived the early years of this. Uh, we had noise levels, we had CO levels, we had every type of problem in the world, and, and uh, it's kind of funny, when we started 30 years ago, there was sprint car drivers and there was midget drivers. And I mean, the, there was the midget, guys that raced midgets didn't run sprint cars and vice versa. And it took probably 10 or 12 years, and then they started getting a crossover, and now then they do it all the time. but. Uh, the sprint car guys, uh, when we started this, we had the World of Outlaw names in here. That's what we thought would draw some people, but uh, it didn't draw them near as quick as we thought, thought they would. And I think this is why 85% of our spectators that's got reserve seats are from out of state because they knew how big a race and what kind of stars was here. So they came, and it was like a pyramid. One guy would come and see it, and you'd think, well, this is a typical indoor on concrete, and then they come and seen the race. Then they'd bring two of their friends, and I think this pyramid's how this thing has grown right here. So uh, as Lanny and I have said many, many times, we wasn't smart enough to make this thing work, and we're going to try to be smart enough not to mess it up. And I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Before we continue, we'd like to invite Miss Karen Keith. Well, Emmett Hahn, you are a rock star around here, so thank you so much. We uh, really appreciate what you've done for our community. If you talk to any of the hoteliers in the Tulsa area, they love the Chili Bowl. This is not a time of year when they fill a lot of rooms, and they are so grateful for this event. And to all of you, it's good to see you back, Rico, Kyle. You guys, thank you so much for coming back to our community and taking part in this. So it's the 30th anniversary, so we did a proclamation on your behalf. Um, so whereas the Chili Bowl Nationals was founded and organized in 1987 by Mr. Emmett Hahn and Lanny Edwards and is the midget racing's answer to the Super Bowl, and whereas the Chili Bowl Nationals is celebrating its 30th annual show at Expo Square's River Spirit Expo, on this date, and whereas the Chili Bowl's projected economic impact of the Tulsa area is 14 million with an attendance of over 15,000 spectators enjoying the trade show, vendors, and of course the racing events. And whereas Lucas Oil, General Tire, and many other sponsors present the Chili Bowl Nationals. And whereas Tulsa County and the Tulsa Public Facilities Authority are once again proud to join these citizens and vendors in demonstrating the popularity and economic vitality of this show at Expo Square. Uh, so, therefore, in recognition of the impact of the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals on the Tulsa regional economy and in honor of Emmett and Fuzzy Hahn, coupled with the energy and excitement that this show generates, the Board of County Commissioners of Tulsa County, Oklahoma, proclaims Tuesday, January 12th as Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals Day. So, thank you so much to all of you. One thing we'd like to point out on the coverage of this year's Chili Bowl Nationals, it will be provided again online pay-per-view by RacingBoys.com. 
And also for the second year in a row, we will be live on Saturday night on MAP TV Motorsports Network. And joining that coverage this year will be the launch of Lucas Oil Racing TV, an all racing video on demand website that also offers video streaming of the Chili Bowl Nationals, as well as year round coverage of the Lucas Oil Motorsports and their empire, including the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series presented by the MAP TV Motorsports Network. Without further ado, we'd like to open it up for questions for our drivers and owners. Uh, not really. Um, I don't. I don't think. Uh, hold it for him too. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 not so hard on me just because I get to race a lot, uh, and it's you know I just look at it as another race. Uh, I just in, it, you got to enjoy all these moments uh, because you know you might not be the champion again, and uh, so it's it's just cool. It's just cool to soak it all in. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think it's it's probably the biggest race uh, in open wheel racing. Uh, it's and it's one of the best and with the best competition with from NASCAR to IndyCar to uh, stock car racing, just in general and and sprint car racing and midget racing. Uh, you know, if you beat them here, you beat them all, and uh, it's that's what's huge about this event. And I think you know it, it's not too many people have won it, so it's it's just really cool to be on this list. No, the, the end of the year was great. Uh, I got to run Phoenix and Homestead. Uh, still working on finalizing a bunch of stuff this year, and don't really have anything, you know, set in stone. Uh, but uh, you know, just I'll let you guys all know when it comes down to it. It's not fun, you know. You definitely want to want to race after uh, you know being on the podium. That's still six years in a row. It's it's tough to just not even be able to get in a car. But uh, you know, fun to be a part of this. You know, however you can be. And and I definitely wanted to do you know everything I could to to be as involved as I could. And uh, you know, I was hoping I healed enough to to maybe jump in. But uh, you know, that didn't happen quick enough. So uh, you know, just trying to. To enjoy it, and uh, you know, maybe make somebody else get up there. If I can, uh, I can win as an, an owner at least would be fun. Yeah, I mean, it just just depends on on what it heals. You know, I've I've got a lot back, but uh, you know, I haven't got enough back yet to to do it properly. So, I mean, uh, we've got the the hand control stuff in my car over there right now, and you know, just uh, probably wouldn't be very good on my back yet if if I jumped in and, and tried to race now, but. Uh, you know, we'll see where I'm at, you know, come a few months from now. And, you know, if I got to do it with my hands, I'll, I'll try like hell to do it with my hands. Uh, well, it's, it, you know, it hasn't been very long, so uh, you know, it's just something they put together and, you know, got here with. It, uh, you know, it's different for all of us. And, uh, it's a lot different for me, you know, not not being able to work with him on our car. So, um, glad he could do it, and hope he uh, has a good time. This question is for all you guys. Talk about how luck plays into this point. Getting through your qualifying night, least unscathed, if you don't win. But how much does luck play in this event in getting to Saturday night? Um, you know, I used to think watching this race. Um, 80% of it was luck, but then you get to run it and you, you make you make a lot of your own luck. Um, it seems you know the there's about the same field of cars in the feature every year, so uh, you know they're not all getting you know lucky each year. Um, yeah, I mean it definitely takes some sort of luck. You know, last year in my heat race on my prelim night, a uh, guy spun out in front of me and I had nowhere to go and and uh, you know, had to dig out of the C main and, and you know had I not made it out of the C main, I would just said I had a lot of bad luck. So uh, I was able to, you know, make it up and, and you know, win my prelim feature that night and uh, turned it around for myself. But 
Um, everything you do takes some sort of luck, but uh, I wouldn't say this race takes much more than any other one. Kevin the fans, um, after your accident, man, it was pretty, uh, I'm sure, overwhelming to how many people reached out to you. I know a lot of tracks, they took, uh, you know, people passed the home and around. Just talk about that, what it meant to you, all the fans, after your accident. It's huge. I mean, this whole, uh, you know, community really is one big family. You know, they always say it, but uh, until something like this happens, you know, you don't really see it. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was amazing, the, you know, the outpour of, of everything and stuff that's, that's still happening, you know, to this day. And, uh, you know, what uh, <clears throat> the therapy and stuff that, that I got to go through and the amount of it that I got to go through, it's going to take, you know, ungodly amounts of uh, hospital bills. So everything's been... Uh, been a huge help, and uh, you know, hopefully, I'll be be walking around in here next year. You doing anything about maybe changing something that in the car that would help from that accident and your injury? Are you looking at trying to make something better? Better. Yeah, I mean, we've looked at a lot of stuff. You know, obviously, it's you know, the, over the years, they've worked a lot on not breaking our neck. You know, and nobody really looked at breaking the bottom of your back. You know, and, and it's just, uh, you know, that was one of the softest crashes of, of my entire career. It just landed right. You know, and it's kind of a freak deal. And, you know, obviously it hasn't happened. To, you haven't seen it happen really at all. And, uh, you know, but it's something that, that we're looking into really hard to try to, to eliminate and, and make sure nobody else happens to uh, has to go through this. Uh, quick question for you, Tony. And in all the hats you've worn in this building from owner to driver, even as spectator now, working the track last year and coming back to do it this year, is there anything that you took away coming into this year that maybe you didn't realize about this event or things to do different this year? I think, you know, I've got a track, we've got a series now, I've got teams and I'm still a driver so I get to see it from a lot of different angles, but uh, I don't think people really realize how much it takes to put this event on and how much that Emmett and Lanny and, and everybody, it just, it is such a huge work in progress to make these two weeks with the shootout and, and, and the Chili Bowl happen. So, uh, you know, it's everybody's got their roles they play, and, uh, you know, I kind of backed away from some of my dirt racing. So, coming and helping doing the track, and, uh, you know, it's the same the guys I'm working with this year, the same three guys I worked with last year, and, um, you know, it's it's just part of the process. Uh, you know, shootout week they were talking about, they were starting at 9 in the morning and finishing at at 12 o'clock at night and had a thousand heat races to run uh, so it's it's a lot to get done in a day and uh, you know I, I got my real good taste of it last year after about the sixth heat on Tuesday and the guy on the end comes storming across the infield and uh, so it, it's 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 a pressure packed week it, it is for the drivers it is for the owners uh, but it is for everybody that works here I mean it, it takes it takes everybody to make this show run very smooth and uh, don't let Emmett fool you. He he says he's not very smart, but you you don't you don't build an event like this uh, and have it run for 30 years by not being smart and and good at what you do. So um, you know they've done a great job, and it's uh, you know it's fun to, to be a part of it. And you know even though it's a different capacity than what I'm used to doing, it's uh, you know these guys race two nights out of the week, and I've got to be on for six nights of the week doing it right, or else uh, Emmett comes down and yells at me. So I just want to keep my job this week. <laughs> You know, something that people don't realize is two weeks ago we had the shootouts. Local people know how wet of spring and fall that we had here. The clay came in way, way wetter than it ever has. And luckily we was running the little micros and it didn't destroy the racetrack, but it wasn't good at the shootout. So after that was over, that Sunday we went in and took the corners out of this racetrack 200 loads and spread it in the infield, had them turn the heat on where we could dry it out, and then Thursday would put that clay back in there and then just build another racetrack since Thursday. So them guys have done a lot of work. He forgot to tell me that until I got here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like like was said earlier i mean it's it is the dirt track race of the year i mean it's i don't care what series what track i mean this this is the place to be so uh it's the only time all year you're going to get this many quality cars and drivers and and teams to to come to one event and race and uh, you know 
know, you, you don't see 300, you don't see 300 of any race cars anywhere other than here each year. It just, it doesn't exist. So to do it and do it in a, a special facility like this, and it's just, uh, you know, it's hard to say, it's hard to put it into words, but I mean, this is just one of those, if you said you could only go to one week out of the year, you could go to a race, where would you go? This is where most people would pick. So it's, um, it's just a, it's a cool deal. I mean, we, it's about the one week that all of our buddies that, that we see throughout the year, we're all in the same place at the same time. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a special opportunity for us to, to not only run a race that we like, but at the, the same time, it's, uh, I think we have just as much fun in the evenings after we're done uh, around here. So um, it, it's it's just a special event. Well, I spoke with some of the people on the track, telling you know, it's only about some of the liberal modes you have that you manage to create more than once I've heard. They always tell me to come back with this. So I guess I would ask you, have you thought about it? Are you considering it? And could you share just at least one experience that you can go back to and like that kind of Oh, it's, you know, the, the first time I won the Chili Bowl here, that was, that really, I mean, it was in 2007, and we'd already won the Triple Crown, and, uh, you know, had won an IndyCar championship by then, but it, it winning the Chili Bowl, a one, a one race event was bigger than winning the IndyCar championship to me. It was much harder to win the Chili Bowl, so, uh, you know, and, and, you know, that's a trophy that everybody wants this trophy from here, and so, um you know, it's just a special deal, but it, you know, I don't know. I guess we'll see after the weekend. If he fires me after the weekend, I'll for sure be able to drive then. But he's on probation. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time I've been on probation. <laughs> Normally, it's a different sanctioning body than here, but uh, but it's not the first time. So I don't know. I I mean, I I plan on running a lot of dirt races after the end of the season when I when I retire from the Cup stuff. So uh, I would say this is on the radar again. Emmett, can you talk about his 30 years? What does it mean to you to have these guys here 30 years later compared to 1987 when you guys weren't sure what you had and even in those early years? You know, what does it mean to you to see this event come to life? Like that? 1987, we knew what we had. A loser. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's come a long way. And, and again, people ask me all the time, did you ever imagine this thing to grow to this caliber and there's nobody in this room that could even dream that a race could come out like this but it goes back to this area right here is centrally located pretty much for population in the United States not going to get rain or snowed out uh, time of year not another building like this in the world and uh, OM is just lucky and I appreciate these guys <laughs> Rico Cup let me ask you, you know, we always talk about there's a lot of gray hair guys sitting up in the grandstands now and what we've got to do to get younger people up in the grandstands. You kind of represent the young crowd. And what do you think that we could do in our industry to make more young people? I think we got plenty of young guys that want to drive, but young people that want to sit up in the grandstands and watch you guys drive. Do you have any suggestions on what we could do to get the young people more involved in our sport? <laughs> uh, I think I really think Chili Bowl is doing everything or a lot of it that takes to get younger kids into it. Uh, you know, it's on live TV on Saturday night. That's a big part of uh, what I think makes a lot of sports where they're at now, where we've kind of lost that with sprint car, visit racing, um, and to get those bigger brands and would help get to the younger crowd. So uh, events like the Chili Bowl, I think, helps get those bigger brands to come on board, and uh, that just helps open up younger millennials' eyes to uh, our type of racing, so um, I don't know. It's uh, I, I, I just, as a driver, I, I don't really know what it takes. Um, and it's a whole lot smarter than the rest of us here. So. Do you notice younger people coming up to you though now, more, maybe? Um, so this weekend, uh, I was just at the Roar for the Daytona test, and what I thought was really cool on uh, Saturday was uh, they had the Boy Scouts come, and so there's hundreds of tents thousands of kids walking through the, the garage area and uh, that was just I thought it was cool to you know it was just a small way to get you know some kids to come uh, see race cars go down a racetrack even though it was a test you know they don't really know so um, I don't know just something to get younger younger kids there it's it's hard suggestions I, I just think that it, just building events around events and driving uh, the youth 
to there. Um, I've spent some time in Australia the last few years, and they have, you know, sounds funny, but they have a carnival, and you know, during the races, uh, you know, something for the kids to do when they, they were to get bored. Uh, but I think, and then just telling friends, telling people. Uh, I had two friends come last year, and now eight of them are coming this year. So it's yeah. it's, it's just uh, with the with the publicity and the media. Uh, is out there. I think it's it's more incapable of doing. It's just doing it the right way. Kids gravitate towards you. Obviously. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, kids are mm. feel comfortable like coming up to me. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, kids more seats. Kids <laughs> 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 more kids. Yeah. But uh, I think just because of my stature and I'm you know, more their size, but look grown up, uh, it's intriguing to them, and uh, so that's it's that helps as well. I think uh, something for them to. Come see, and then they get to watch me race on the track, which is really cool for them. Tony, the state of uh, dirt track racing, owner, driver, um, track owner. What, where, where are we at right now? The state of dirt track racing. I think we all realize that we've all got to work a little bit more together to maybe pick it up a little bit. But uh, what would you say that uh, the state of the economy of uh, dirt track racing and, and, and what we can do to improve it just a little bit? I was pretty encouraged last year, actually. I mean. I went to Knoxville, I went to Williamsboro, uh, went to a lot of dirt events last year and, uh, and talking to different track owners and promoters. I mean, attendance was up, crowds were up, uh, you know, their car counts for their bigger events were up. So uh, I feel like it's starting to gain momentum again. I mean, the, the economy hurt everything for a long time and I think we're just now seeing uh, where it's starting to hopefully come out of it on the on the short track side. So. You know, we, our track at Eldora had a great year last year. I thought we had a, a good first year with a series with the All-Stars last year. And, uh, you know, I feel like there's a lot of good things on the horizon for short track racing. There's there's great facilities. There's, uh, you know, great promoters and great series sanctioning bodies that, uh, like Rico said, I mean, they're thinking outside the box now and starting to figure out, you know, how to take a race weekend and do do more than just host a race and how to make it an event, how to make it... Uh, you know the, the entertainment side is so so competitive right now I mean you're, you're literally in, in talking about bringing kids to the track the first thing you do is take their cell phones away from them because they don't have to do anything they don't have to go anywhere they can sit sit in their room don't have to move and can be entertained all night but uh, you know there's a lot of good stuff out there you just gotta know where to go and that's that's the problem with getting new people to the racetrack so you know a lot of these promoters building bigger events around a race uh, that's that's starting to, to show results, and I feel like the, the crowds are getting better because of it. Five-year deal, too, now with the truck race. You like that, I'm sure. Yeah. I like that a lot better than going year to year. So, uh, you know, that's that's an event that we like to, to host. It's it's not our biggest event of the year, but, um, you know, I think it's I think it's important to the short track industry and the dirt industry because people that follow NASCAR racing and don't know anything about dirt racing get to see what a dirt race is about once a year. So we're, we're proud of that. Sammy, how much different is the competition now with the typical compared to 15 years ago? It's just more, more cars, more drivers. I don't think the ratio is still the same. It's just, uh, or, or maybe it's not exactly the same, but it's really a, not much different. You just have more, more people, more cars. I mean, now you got to be on your toes a little bit more a little more defense than they used to, uh, but that's about it. Sammy, are you still driven as much as a race car driver now as you've ever been? Well, if I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easier way to put it. But if I don't have that, it's, you know, if you don't have that passion, how can you do it? I think I'm, I'm in better shape and I'm healthier than I've been in a while, so um, I'm more motivated. You know, part of it is because I know there's not that, I don't know when that end's coming. So, um, it, it's, it's, I'm great right now. Happy to be here. Grateful to be here. Grateful to be competitive. I don't get much of an adjustment jumping, like I said, just from testing into a small mission like this to get out there and compete. Um, no, it's more of an adjustment going into prototype car more than anything because um, 
I've done this for a while now, uh, where I've only done the prototype car, you know, once each of the last three years, and uh, it's a pretty, pretty difficult car to to drive just because it's so twitchy and the tires are just a lot different than uh, what I'm used to. So um, jumping into this, though, it's uh, I don't know. You take a quick second to think about what car you're in. That's about it, and uh, kind of get to get the hang of it pretty quickly. Did that help you out there at Yuma a little bit? Yeah, I definitely think going to uh, to Yuma to run a sprint car for a few nights helps when I come here. Um, you know, back when I was going to New Zealand and running, you know, five or six nights in a midget, that really helped. I thought, um, but yeah, getting getting some dirt experience before the Chili Bowl uh, definitely helps. Tony's got about three more hot lap sessions, and he needs to go to work. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. We would like to thank everybody for coming out and local media as always. We have an open door policy. Just check in with our office and you'll be able to come in, talk with the drivers, you know, and get footage of anything, just about anything you need. Um, a couple of the drivers will be available throughout the day. Um, so you can try to go down to the pits, try to organize interviews with them. But thank you all very much. If you need anything else, if you need more information, uh, the website is chilibowl.com. Also, we'll be posting information throughout the week to our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Thank you all very much for coming.